Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood and I will be your narrator for this installation. Now we have a situation here where we have a sump pump discharge line that's just dumping water really close to the home and it failed it finally quit and they just have a piece of black corrugated pipe above ground that takes it out to the front so we're going to have a big six inch system you can see there's cross t's some t's this is a triangle section this is how this design came together i walked with the homeowner and we flagged it together and what's nice about using flags opposed to paint is when you're trying to connect all the dots you can move the flags to where they make sense and it just makes the job um, you know that much easier when they sh when your crew shows up that next day you're not dealing with a situation where you got all these painted lines that have been literally X'd and scribbled out so here we are in Richmond, Michigan, and as you can see, Richmond is an agricultural district. We're out in the country, really big lots, so I want you guys to get a handle on what the layout looks like. There you go. There's a great drone shot for you guys on a really big lot out in Richmond, Michigan. Just love it. So we're using a, the Boffman 6-inch mini culvert pipe. It's a four slot. We're going to use that to move the majority of the water. And inside this system, we're going to run that that problem. Look at that. He's got black hose on his front yard. That was the old sump line that would just dump right there on a septic field. So this was a big dig. You know, it's over 300 feet. We got three mini ditch witches to keep up with Francisco. You know, he's swinging dirt faster than these guys can run it out to the street on a big property like this and, you know, put it in one of the dump trailers. Honestly, you're not going to see much of me here because I was I was basically running stone and dirt on this job just to keep up with a job like this. So it was, you know, quite a bit of manpower. You know, we brought a six man team for this. And uh, as contractors know what this stuff runs, uh, you know, we're, we got a half million dollars worth of equipment. When you look at the trucks and trailers and uh, the equipment here that we're installing with. So there's your drone flight. Now everybody's fully, you know, acclimated to uh, this big lot. And I'll get you on the ground and, uh, you know, we'll get up close and personal like you're used to seeing all of our videos now I want you to know that we have now 12 cameras on site so you're gonna get your drone footage that gives you guys like bearing on the job so it makes sense to you and then we have time-lapse cameras we have a lot of cameras I have some help now finally uh, people walking with cameras on gimbals so that the video is a little more tolerable. So there's our big dump trailer that you guys see a lot of. We have several of them, and, man, it, they were filling that thing up so fast it was it was nuts. Remember, we got a 6-inch piece of Boffman 4-slot mini culvert pipe going in. So we have a big, wide bucket. We're digging out... 22 inches in width and 16 inches deep trench that's another dump trailer full of full of dirt that is going out and um, I'll get you I'll get you up close and personal here on the ground all right so you see he's got an RV we got to make sure that we have our mini culvert pipe so that he can back his camper over this system. I don't have to worry about none of that. I don't have to worry about the amount of weight. On big lots like this, you know there's going to be a lot of traffic from four-wheelers, quads, things like that. And folks are pretty much used to just driving across their acreage. You want to build a system that's going to withstand all that traffic that it's going to see on a regular basis. This gentleman has lived with this problem for years, and he's treating himself. He's finally, you know, had enough, and he wants to address it. He found us, and that was that. Uh, after 23 years of dealing with it, and of course, he's had other guys out there trying to fix it by what? 
adding dirt, regrading. And like I always preach, run your drain tile in these collection areas and you won't be burdened with all this fill dirt and all this regrading. And now you got so much, you know, you got to resod or seed, whatever your personal preference is. You're going to have heavy restoration to your irrigation system if you have one. Now, this job did not have an irrigation system, which that was great news. It does help the dig, but co contractors and DIYers, beware. You got to put sandy loam down on top of this system before you put the grass back. So let me explain. We take one bag of topsoil and one bag of sand, and we mix that in a wheelbarrow. We just keep that ratio going, and we call it sandy loam. We put that on top of the fabric. We leave, you know, the fabric, It's in, we leave it lower than we typically would if they had sprinklers. So when you burrito wrap it, you go ahead and recess your water system so that you can add sandy loam and then put your grass back. That's the only way you're going to get grass to survive on this system when you don't have an irrigation system. So this is not done with a trencher. As you can see, we're using our track hoe, our U17 Kubota that we love so much. And, you know, you're always going to see Francisco in it unless he's taken a personal day and then I end up in it. And before, I was the only one shooting these jobs. So you wouldn't get no footage of me in it. But that should change here moving forward. Now that we have actually some in-house help, you know, teaching, you know, we're just all amateurs, but we're trying to do our best for you. So this is the sump line coming off the house. And Valen, Valentin, he's over here um, putting in our winter kit. As many of you know, in Michigan, the North, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Canada, got a shout out to you guys. We have our winter kit and he's putting one of our winter kits on this house. You can see if that line freezes, and that was just an above-ground Band-Aid, and, you know, it's amazing how long you can put something like this off. And for whatever reason, this gentleman had enough, and he was ready. And isn't that Murphy's Law? We cut that stub, and the sump pump went on, started pouring water all over Valentine. So in any case... It's active. It's still active, and we're in a drought. I mean, you know, typically, you know, we're seeing 85 to 92, 93 degrees. But this is great. You're going to get to see our winter kit put together. Now, he's going to cut a 3-inch Schedule 40 stick to get, you know, that's what he's measuring for right now, uh, to get to that, you know, 3 to 4 that we have in our kit. And look at how everybody methodically knows what they're doing. We have the machine operators. You know, Valente, he's been just outstanding. I mean, what a great addition. He's in the trench. He's keeping, you know, Francisco right where he needs to be. That sump line turned on and poured water, and our trench was was moving it. So we, we could see right there our laser transit was on. And we have it recalibrated. We're always making sure that that thing is accurate because guys beware no matter how good of a laser transit you buy and they can show you these commercials where they throw it in a dryer and they run it in the dryer and they beat it all up and then it works perfect when they pull it out but the truth be told when you're driving down uh, roads you know and you're hitting you know little bumps and things like that and you know certain equipment like transits that's really hard on it i mean try to keep that transit in the back of your truck as in if you have a four door, you know, put it in the back seat versus, say, a rigid trailer that has heavy suspension. So, Valentine's methodically putting this together, which, man, I, I just can't say enough about our trades. This is the difference between, a, a, you know, a true trademan. So, he wants to make sure that this slip bushing can move up and down. So when the ground freezes, it'll heave this pipe because we're not below frost. We're not going to take it below frost because then we can't get rid of the water. We're stuck with running the system in the frost. So we want to design it so it moves up and down. So our, our freeze prevention, well, actually, it's not considered freeze prevention, freeze protection, because if you did have a line freeze up, it prevents 
a flooded basement because the water can still pour outside of the house right at the foundation there. You can see that little 90 pointing down to the ground. That's an overflow in the event that there's a freeze up. You know, it's unlikely because we take this to a four inch piece of PVC schedule 40. When you're displacing water in a pipe that big, it changes dramatically. Now, contractors and homeowners, keep in mind that the code now in the U.S. is a minimum three inch schedule 40 for your sump pump discharge line. That is the minimum. All codes in the code book are a minimum. Keep that in mind. So we went up from three inches to four inch schedule 40. And we're, we're like that with everything. If we're doing a footing instead of 42 inches, you're going to see us pour a 50 inch footing because I've seen the frost get under a 42 inch footing and he fence posts. He've, believe it or not, additions on homes. I mean, make just messes of people's properties. There was a ditch out front, but contractors and homeowners beware. Your ditch on one side of your yard is going to be higher than it is on the Okay, so here's the thing. That's why that is running on an angle, and it's not a straight line down to the ditch. The ditch bottom was too high, so we had to be further down the street, further down the ditch, where we had more drop. So that's why you know this design, this system made sense. We were using as much slope as we could possibly you know get using all the tricks in the contractor's handbook. So. Valentine's buttoning this up. You know, that's something you want to get right. You know, you don't want to rush a guy. You tell a guy, okay, here you go. You know, you know what you're doing. And then get back and jump in with the team. So I, I got to, you know, give him a shout out because, you know, he did a great job. And, and what I mean by that, it was very neat and clean too. It, it really irritates me when a contractor just slaps a bunch of, you know, cement, you know, PVC cement. You see all the PVC cement running and it just looks bad. You know, that was a nice, clean installation, you know, of good materials. You can see just how big that six inch is. Those rolls are just, it's silly how big those rolls are when you handle that stuff, man. It's, it's nuts. So, again, the reason why we have three ditch witches is there's such a long travel, you know, to get out of this plywooded road that we built in, you know, by the time a guy gets out and dumps, you know, Francisco's already got another one full and he's on his way to go dump. And so that's why, that's why we needed three ditch switches. You know, I don't know if I've ever shot a video showing how we do and install using three ditch witches. So we have the 1550, which just rides like a Cadillac. It's the best riding ditch witch on the planet. And then we have a 1050, that's brand new. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Can't say enough good about it. I'm gonna give you guys a full hardcore review of all the ditch witch products. And you know, which ones I like for which reasons, uh, where they shine the most, each one. You know, if you're already pretty heavy on equipment and you're adding, you know, additional uh, ditch witches, or maybe you're just starting out and you're like, hey, I got X many dollars. And what should I do as far as, to, you know, just one machine. I'm starting out with one machine. I don't want to screw up. What's the do all? What is a Swiss army knife of ditch witches? And I'm going to get that straightened out for you. And we are also going to work on that uh, gimbal over there that we're having a problem with. But uh, in any case, time to get the fabric in. There's where the PVC is going to end. Now, this is what we're going to do, guys. We have a six inch mini culvert pipe of Boffman tile that we're going to run in this massive French drain system. And then we're going to uh, hook up knife cut. And you guys, if you're a subscriber of this channel, again, I want to thank you for your loyalty to the channel. You know that we like life uh, knife cut. We load that with water and it'll carry water a ways and slowly let it leach into the system. The French drain system won't overwhelm it. And we're going to run that right in the same trench, get the most, I wanted to get the homeowner the most bang for his dollar out of this dig. I mean, this was quite a dig. You know, we, we had removed a lot of heavy clay and brought in 
an unbelievable amount of stone. So this drain is going to last forever. Stone doesn't have an expiration date. And I believe that people are being on the conservative side when they say that this virgin tile, they say it can last 200 to 500 years. It doesn't show composition, period. I've dug up pipe that's made out of this material that's 40 years old and it looks as good as the day it was put in the ground so again the virgin material that yellow boffman tile it doesn't have no additives keep that in mind why because when you have that black pipe from home depot there's a lot of additives put in that it's all recycled material I've literally seen the hoppers that make that pipe. There's orange, blue, yellow from all the different food containers that get ground up. I mean, it's great to recycle, and I, I'm glad there's somewhere for this stuff to go. I just don't literally want to put ground up garbage in the ground for my customers. That's why we only use the yellow and the blue. The yellow and the blue are a virgin material, which means no recycled materials. Now, besides you know pipe failing and collapsing, there's some other issues that you have with that uh, pipe. When you go with the recycled pipe that's black, they, the animals, they can smell that pipe. It's made out of restaurant containers, you know, the big vats. That's all ground up and recycled, and, and, and they make that black pipe that you see in Home Depot, and that's been a problem. It's been a problem because, you know, skunks, which are very unpleasant. If you have dogs and you let them out, that just sucks. But you want to you want a virgin material for its strength. You want a virgin material for its longevity. You want a, a virgin material so that you don't have animals digging up your French drain system, your yard drain system, your sump pump discharge line system, whatever it may be, leach field, whatever you're building, leach line. We teach it all right here on the French Drain Man channel. We are a licensed building company and we are doing yard drainage at the highest level. We set the bar and we want our subscribers to get the very best experience. That's why we're working hard to improve how you see the jobs, how you view the jobs, so that you can do a great job on your DIY project or if you're a contractor, Hey, I've been doing this for 35 years. I've been doing all kinds of builds, and each and every build I've ever done, I had to think about water, and I had to put in some sort of yard dewatering system to accommodate my outdoor living spaces, my in-ground swimming pools, all that stuff. So that's where all my knowledge comes from. When I think of drainage, I see drainage each and everything. I mean, okay, I pull up to a house. That sidewalk, I think of the drainage. The porch, I think of the pitch that has to have... Um, the porch needs a certain pitch so it don't ice up, especially here in the winter, or it's wet and slippery if you're in the south. I look at the driveway, and if it's not pitched away from the house properly, and then, okay, once all that sheet water comes off the driveway, now what do you do with it? Is it just stuck in a narrow green belt? Usually it is, and you need a French drain system. I truly believe that every home, every homeowner, and every piece of property needs a roof runoff system a good sump pump discharge line, and somewhere on that property where they see bulk water, they need a yard drain, French drain combination to collect that water and keep their yard from getting soft, from, from it getting mushy, uh, becoming a, a Petri dish. You know, you don't want to let your dog out. You don't want to let your children out and play in a yard that's just saturated. It's just a mess. If you're a homeowner who has experienced that, you know you got to wipe their paws off, and your children come in, and right away you got to throw all their clothes in the in the wash machine. It's just an absolute mess, and honestly, it really is a big disruption to your to your lifestyle. For what? Just because you're putting off putting in a yard drain system? Remember too that recycled material that brings in possums and skunks and all that. How many homeowners have had to deal with their dog, you know, wanting to go outside because they know something's out there. And just by habit, you let them out because you think that's all they need to do is just go outside. 
and then they come back in, they smell, you know, they got t tangled up with a skunk. So my clients only get the blue pipe and the yellow pipe because it's virgin. I want to make sure that you guys understand that. And I want to emphasize how I think that when a homeowner buys a home or goes out into a rural community like Richmond, Michigan, and builds a beautiful home and, and pole building on a spacious lot with acreage, before you seed, before you put that in the seed, and if you're in the, the suburbs, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you live in urban or suburban or rural communities, yard drains have to be put in before you do the grass or it ends up costing a little more because now you're cutting the sod off now you're plywooding i do systems for homeowners that lived with water problems in a house or two and they're in their last home they have so much experience as a homeowner and they're like you know what bob we're bringing you in we want you to come and see what's going on as the house is being built and then you know, we're going to bring you in as soon as the finished grade is done. And you come in and you tell us how you would run the roof runoff system, where we need to pick up the water with French drains. And they get it done at half price because now we're not laying plywood down. Now we're not cutting sod down, you know, and cutting sod off and having to mix uh, sandy loom and put sod back. So here's the uh, schedule 40 line that's going to get covered up with the dirt we didn't haul that dirt away we left it on the plywood right next to it if it was new construction i wouldn't even had to put plywood down we could have just scraped the dirt you know back and then you know scraped it right over top so everything is done so much more efficient on new construction so if you build a house and you built maybe more see we're saving that dirt we got into some good dirt and I said that we're going to put on top of the fabric before we put the grass over it so that it'll grow better. But if you if you built more house than you can afford and you find yourself in a bad way and you got to cut corners in the end, more than likely you're going to end up with a house that has a leaky basement, a soggy yard because you can't afford the roof runoff system. You don't have the funds to you know do the drainage properly. And if you're a brand new homeowner, a lot of times a young homeowner, you just don't know what you're getting into. You've never been in that position before. It's something your mom and dad took care of and you weren't burdened. So there's our laser transit on site so that we can keep pitch all the way out to that front ditch. And I just want to remind you guys about those ditches out in front. You'll always have more pitch on one side of the lot than the other because the ditches are sloped so that the water drains. So keep that in mind. So I'm running the gimbal right now. Got Gabby, you know, she's on one of the ditch which is helping out. She's been helping me out tremendously with, with the videos, and I appreciate it because, again, this is the first year in four years that I've had any help at all with capturing video for you guys. So here we are. We're just lining up the ditch witches, and Francisco is just – Man, he's he's moving the dirt. We're getting closer to the road, so now we're actually keeping up with Francisco. That's the one machine, that's the one process that cannot be sped up. We did buy a trencher that will trench, a really big trench. And I'm going to do a video on that for you guys. And I'm going to explain to you why we no longer use it. We... We, uh, you know, spent the money to bring it in because you know how we are. We spare no expense if we can, you know, speed up productivity, save the homeowner money on install. That's what we do. That's our job as a contractor to stay with, stay up on the latest techniques, equipment, everything. Stay sharp. We don't use that trencher. It's brand new. I spent a lot of money for it, and I can't wait to do the video on it. But if you notice, we're not using it. So I'm going to leave it at that for now until we get to that video. So what Francisco's doing right now, this is smart. Now, homeowners, DIYers, he's taking the bucket of that track hole and he's just pushing the dirt in. This way you're not, you know, sweat equity. Come on, you know, save your back. You only have one. You know, that's the truth. So look at that. That easy. And he runs it over with the track. He pushes the dirt in, 
And then he drives on it with the rubber track, which that's not going to hurt anything. That Schedule 40 piece of PVC is strong. He does this on top of the Boffman tile all the time. So there's a 6-inch and a 4-inch tile. Remember, the 6-inch is the French drain system. The 4-inch was for the uh, sump pump discharge line, which we took the straightest line as we could in this system with that. Um, I know that the one coil we had was a 250-foot coil, and then we... Um, had to add a little bit to that to make it out to the ditch. Like I said, this was over 300 feet. This was a big system, a lot of fun. You know, it, it's it's great. Uh, we had a beautiful, beautiful Michigan day here, and uh, everybody was in you know just great spirits. I mean, some days are rain days. Some days you got to work through the rain. Uh, you know, we do winter work. Uh, you you got to love working outdoors to do this, and you got to dress for it. You know, when it's cold. You know, if you're dressed properly, I still enjoy what I do. You know, it, it's rare that I don't. It, it, it'll take like a really bitter cold wind off of Lake St. Clair in the middle of winter, cutting through, you know, cutting through your, your clothing like a knife uh, to, to make me miserable because uh, that's how much I enjoy this stuff. But that was an area where I just wanted some cross tees put in, you know, just what you end up doing is you just fill those with stone that's called a blind inlet you know you don't need a pipe going up into a little spot you you know there's a pothole holding water so just go up and grab it you know it's a branch to your main and just run your big six inch because that stuff's you know a little different for DIYer it's a little harder to work with than uh, the four inch and look how big the pipe is I mean look at Francisco handling you know the fittings I'm sorry that's Valentine I mean it's big stuff you know and if you do decide to go that route because you have six, seven, 10, 12 acres of property and you know you're dealing with that much water and maybe you're going to be backing a horse trailer over it and driving all, all over it. Look at that stuff. Look at how tall that roll is. So, so, you know, we call this the Boffman Tile Mini Culvert Pipe. And we do ship it all over the United States and Canada now. So we have figured out how to do that. You know, this product is not easy to ship. And it's been a bear the past year figuring out how to get all these products to you. But everybody that's been watching our videos and learning how to properly install a yard drain system and a French drain system along with roof runoff systems and some pump discharge lines, you know that we're the leaders as far as dewatering your properties. Just keep watching the videos. You will see something that resembles the problem you're having, and you'll be able to kind of start modeling what we're doing. And before you know it, you have it all figured out. And, again, we'll get you the materials you need. You know, you go to our online store. It's very organized. When we, when we launched it, 14 months ago it was rough around the edges for sure because we're contractors we knew nothing of the shipping business and we sure to heck didn't know what we were doing with our online store it was uh, just the bare minimum but now we have all the same parts and fittings that you see and love and it's because you guys kept calling and asking for it so it got added to the store so really our subscribers i gotta say thank you thank you thank you uh, a million thanks to all our loyal subscribers and the DIYers that stay subscribers just because they started to enjoy the channel when they're trying to figure out their water problem. You get to know the guys and you kind of get used to seeing some of the equipment and it's kind of cool seeing the different stuff that contractors do on a daily basis. So we love having you and I want to thank you for your loyalty. And if you enjoy more video, more detail, more drone footage, um, you know, more time lapses, you see the effort we're putting in and nobody's paying us for that. And trust me, the Google revenue is a joke. It doesn't cover all the editing, all the hours and time spent, um, you know, shooting this video. But if you enjoy it, please give us a thumbs up. That's what motivates us to do more video like this, to put more into our videos. And, uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough. Thumbs up, everybody. We'd love to, to see more thumbs up. Um, this is Inch and a Half Round Rock. Remember, 
inch and a half round rock. That's what you want. Do not use pea gravel. If a contractor is using pea gravel, right away you know he doesn't understand drainage. If you want to ask a contractor some questions and you're looking for a list of questions because you want to hire somebody to do it right, ask him what kind of aggregate do you use? If he says, I'm going to use styrofoam, peanuts, you definitely don't want to hire that guy because that system doesn't move very much water at all. And the only way it moves surface water is if you put these inlet basins in it, and now you got to pay them to clean it. And those guys, they just prey on, unfortunately, homeowners that don't know any better, and then they get you locked into a, a maintenance program. And if you ignore their maintenance program, then your yard's always wet and soggy because it's plugged and clogged with dirt. We are building the only maintenance-free French drain systems on the planet that last forever. A vein of stone will be here forever. In 200 to 500 years, when this virgin tile starts to show its age, the rock will still move water. Think about that. This system will last. It'll stand the test of time. It'll be here to the end of time. That's what's cool about what we build. And we worked hard getting here. I seen what it took. I seen failure all the time because we're always replacing others. You know, somebody DIY'd a, a job because they saw, you know, some handyman putting peanut pipe in the ground. We ripped that stuff out. It doesn't last. The system fails and it doesn't work very good to begin with. You know, I even asked the homeowner, how did it work when it was in? Well, a little bit for a couple years and then it quit altogether. So Gabby's putting in an inch and a half round rock. You ask your contractor, what kind of aggregate are you going to put in my French drain system? If they say styrofoam peanuts or peanut pipe or pea stone, get them out of your life, throw them off your property before they screw up your money that you could put towards a good French drain. You want to make sure that they are using an inch and a half round rock. And why you want the rock to be round is because crushed stone compacts. When it compacts, you don't have the void that moves the water. So here's a finished product. I mean, talk about there's your six inch pipe, there's your four inch pipe, pretty cool. And, you know, we took it to the ditch bottom. You know, that's, that's all we could do. Look at this. Holy smokes. I mean, I'm telling you what, I will put my team up against anybody. If you got a chip on your shoulder and you're putting yard drains in, We'll we'll have a contest. You know, you do a big job and you show me what it looks like when you're done and we'll see. And I'll be more than happy to feature you on our YouTube channel. But I'm proud of my team. We put this yard back together just the way we found it and we left it better than when we got here because now we got our sandy loom underneath our our uh, sod sod's pretty dry again this was a hot day it was it was a real cooker when you cut the grass off like that and you know i want to mention that diyers and when homeowners when you hire contractors to do a system like this you have to treat that grass like new sod for the next three weeks you're gonna have to water a couple times a day and and that's it really uh, believe it or not a little bit of water for a few weeks and your life's like back to normal and better than ever because you never have that water problem ever again. And now when you open up your windows for fresh air, it really is fresh air because it doesn't have mold spores and this mildew and all these things that are causing these allergies that you think are from the trees and everything else. All right, everybody. Hey, until that next video, and don't forget, give us a thumbs up.